Hi everybody, today we're going to talk about misleading graphs. When graphs are manipulated or presented in an incorrect manner, they can influence how people interpret the data, leading to biased conclusions. Misleading graphs might include missing labels on the x or y axis, unequal intervals on an axis, a vertical axis that starts at a number other than zero, percentages that don't add up to 100, or percentages that add up to over 100, and manipulated visual elements. In this first graph that shows full-time employee work locations, we can see there's hybrid work, work in the office, and work from home. But notice there's not a scale to the graph. We can tell work from home is the smallest, work from the office is the largest, but we don't have any way to really compare these values. Putting a scale on the horizontal axis gives us a way to properly interpret the data. Now we can see that working in the office is close to 60%, Working from home is just over 10%, and hybrid work is under 30. Our next graph says a survey asked participants what sport they played the most growing up. The results are summarized below. This time, instead of having numbers, we just have pictures. So my question to you is what was the most frequently played sport? I'll give you a hint. It's not soccer. At first glance, we may think that soccer is the most often played sport because the soccer balls go furthest to the right. But if we stop and count the number of items in each of the rows, we see that soccer occurred four times, baseball occurred five times, football twice, and basketball once. Because the baseball and bat are smaller in width than the soccer ball, it makes it appear that the soccer occurred more often. This is an example of manipulated visual elements. This is a good example of a time that bias could be unintentional. Someone could have included pictures to make the graph more interesting. But because the size of the baseball and baseball bat are smaller, it could lead the reader to the wrong conclusion of the data. This graph gives the type of program completed by students. It says 50% bachelor degree, 30% master's degree, 5% certificate, and 10% PhD. The first problem we should notice is that the percentages add up to 95% and not 100. Another problem in the graph is the 10% slice is smaller than the 5% slice. This may lead people to think there are more certificate students than PhD students. The graph on the right displays the number of Target stores by year. Notice it starts at 2008, goes to 2023, but only gives every three years in the graph. The graph shows a very steep growth in Target stores over the time period. When we're looking at the graph, I want you to remember that all the years are not represented. So it shows a faster growth than what really happened year by year. Also, the graph starts at the number 1500 and not zero, which gives us a zoomed in view of the changes over the time period. The next graph gives all years shown in our chart. It starts at 2006 and goes to 2023. In this graph, we don't have just a straight linear growth, but some curves along the way. We're still not starting at the number zero on the vertical axis, which means we once again are zoomed in. This zoomed in view, again, does exaggerate the growth over the time period. It makes it look like the growth from 1400 to 2000 is bigger than it actually is. Let's look at one more view of this graph. This version of the graph starts at zero. We still see the little curvature at the beginning from 2006 up to 2009, but it doesn't look as extreme as it did in the zoomed in view. Starting at zero shows us that yes, there's been growth in the number of target stores over this time period, but it's not as large as it looked in our other two graphs. It's important to note that bias in graphs is not always an intentional, but it can still be misleading. So make sure you stop and read all details of the graph before coming to any conclusions.